Now let's look at the thin film interference in the refracted case. So now we will be interested in looking at the third and the fourth rays of light, what happens when they meet each other. Now once you understand the reflected case, the reflected case is quite easy. All you have to look about, or all you have to think about is the path difference. Well, you can see that the third ray has traveled this much and the fourth ray has traveled an additional this distance. And this additional distance is almost equal to, again, 2 times n into t. So if we have, let me use purple for this. So if we go for refracted case, then we have path difference by 3. So additional path by 4 is going to be almost equal to 2 t into m. And next we have to look at is, is there going to be the phase shift? So here's one reflection, but we already know that there's not going to be a phase shift over here. Here's one reflection. Again, there's no phase shift. So there are no phase shifts over here. Therefore, my path difference is going to just remain 20. There is not going, there's going to be no lambda by 2. And so now you can sort of think what's going to happen. All I have to do is repeat the same thing and I have to remove lambda by 2 from here. So lambda by 2 from here disappears. And so now this becomes the condition for my construction, but you can see that is the same thing as you see over here. So whatever we got as a construction case in the reflected system now becomes the destruction, uh, yeah, the destruction case in the refracted system. Therefore, this now acts like a construction over here. And you can do the same thing over here, remove that lambda by 2, and we end up with this answer. So this now acts like the destruction case in the reflected system. So what you might see, what you, what you are seeing is that uh, in the refracted case, the conditions are reversed. And if you think about this logically, I mean mathematically it makes sense, and you think about this logically, you might say something doesn't add up. Why? is that the conditions are reversed. Aren't the conditions the same for construction and destruction regardless of where you look at it? Isn't that for the path difference of an integral multiples of lambda, you should get construction always, and an odd multiples of lambda by 2, you should always get destruction? Well, yeah, the only reason we're getting the difference is because of this term over here. That phase shift is the one that is causing an additional path difference. And because of that, the true path difference over here over here is 20 minus lambda by 2, and the true path difference over here is just 20. So that is the reason. So don't think that in reality your physics has changed. No, the physics has remained the same. It's only because of this additional term the conditions appear to have reversed. So we can now use a rule of thumb, and the rule of thumb when it comes to thin film interference is going to be that if you find that there is going to be a net phase shift between the two interfering waves, then you can use that for construction, 2nt is going to be an odd multiple of lambda by 2, which is an unusual case, you can say, because you have 180 degree phase shift. And if you have no net phase shift, like you see in the refracted case, then what that means is that you're going to have 2nt is equal to be equal to an integral multiples of lambda, which I will say is the usual case. So that's the real rule of thumb that we can use now when it comes to thin film interferences. But what this also means is that whatever colors you're going to see in the reflected case, that is a construction, it's not going to come in the refracted case because it's a destruction. So what this means is that whatever you see in the reflected case, all the colors that you can see in the reflected case will be missing in the refracted case and of course vice versa. So now we can go back to the morpho butterfly and figure out what is causing that awesome color. If you zoom in, you can see tiny, um, I'm going to call them as pixels of this bright blue display. It turns out that inside each of these pixels are thousands of layers of keratin, which is basically a very thin transparent medium of higher than air refractive index. I think it's about 1.5 or 1.6. And these layers are separated by about 200 nanometers.
Yeah, we are working at a nanoscale here. So basically, we are getting a 200 nanometer film of air. So we can figure out what wavelength is going to undergo construction. But to do that, it is important to find out whether it is the usual case with no net phase shifts or the unusual ones. So as the light comes over here, part of it bounces off the top keratin, the rest of it refracts through, keratin is so thin we can ignore that refraction, enters the air film and then bounces off the bottom keratin and these two rays can now interfere. Now can you think which light ray undergoes phase shift? Remember, keratin is higher refractive index than air. Do you have the answer? It's this one, cause it's bouncing off the denser medium. But hey, this ray is also undergoing the phase shift, right? Because that's, it's also under, uh, bouncing off keratin. Since both undergo phase shifts, there is no net phase shift created. And so now we can use the rule of thumb and say, this is going to be the usual case. Therefore, our condition for construction would be 2nt equals multiples of lambda. Since the film is air, n equals 1, the thickness is about 200 nanometers. And so if I put m equals 1, I am looking at the first maxima. And that happens for lambda equals 400 nanometers, which is, if you guessed it, blue. <laughs> Physics truly works, doesn't it? But you may ask, gee, couldn't we have put m equals 2 in that equation? Of course you can. Then you would get a second construction for lambda equals 200 nanometers. Similarly, you would get a third construction for when m equals 3 for about 133 nanometers and so on. But it's pointless to keep continuing because our eyes cannot see any light below a wavelength of roughly about 400 nanometers. So they're there of course, but our retinas in this case are only being excited by 400 nanometers and therefore that is what we see as blue. Just think about this, isn't this cool? Uh, I mean, nature is working at a nano scale to make these beautiful colors without any pigmentation. What about soap bubbles? Well, this is a soap bubble. Here is air, here is air, and in between we have a soap film. Light comes, part of it reflects, rest refracts inside, and then bounces off again, ready now to interfere with the first ray. Now, you should be able to figure out for yourself which one undergoes a phase shift and which won't. Remember, a soap film has a higher than air refractive index. I will give you a clue this time. This will be the unusual case, but it's up to you to figure out whether it's light ray 1 or the light ray 2 which is undergoing the phase shift, and you can do the math. But lastly, the question would be, why thin films? Why doesn't this work with thick films, like maybe a drop of water? Well, you are going to understand that in the next video, where we are going to address this question in a great detail. So stay tuned. Interference is awesome.